performance. It is. I'm kind of jealous. Uh, well, I am very jealous, not kind of, because I want to <laughs> dance like Daisy. Well, let's have her over right now. Daisy, Daisy. Oxen Stierna, come on over and have a seat with us. Still in the midst of our festivities yes. as we celebrate four years of Sea Today, our anniversary, and of course, right. our signature program, the Sea Morning Show, Expanding Horizons, Inspiring mm -hmm. More. Daisy, have a seat. Let's, yeah. uh, let's talk a little bit, give you a moment to catch your breath. That was an amazing performance. There's a Balinese dance called the Rajang Dance, correct? Yes. Okay. By the way, thank you so much for being here because it is our anniversary yes. and you are our special guest, Daisy. Oh, I'm on Such a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're here from Bali. Yes. yes. So how long are you saying, well, have you been living in Bali? Um, nearly five years or six years, something like that. Right. Yeah. So, so five to six years. Yeah. And then you start your journey learning Balinese dance, um, dancing. Uh, it was since 2021, so it's like almost four years. Oh my gosh. So it's We're very fluent. That's yeah. what I would have thought, yeah. because many people would think that, especially Indonesian traditional dance, um, you would think that you would have to be very since, little. Since, yeah, But I, a yeah. few that I've talked to actually say, no, that's not the case at all. Mm. You can actually learn in a few years. So what got you first interested, I mean, moving to Bali, obviously it was a bit of a culture shock, probably a mm -hmm. lot to, to learn. So what introduced you, or who introduced you to Balinese dance? Well, um, I used to take gymnastic classes okay. with um, another teacher. And uh, we had a performance one evening, and that's where I met another teacher, Miss Ayu Anantaputri, who is now my teacher of Balinese dance. She was doing a performance of contemporary dance with her group, and after me and my group performed, we watched them, and we were like totally amazed. We were like <laughs> yeah. blown away by their performance. And then after that, when they had danced already, they came down from stage and. My mom came up to the teacher and said, like, can we please join your class? Was like, nice. That was like so amazing. And then, of course, the teacher said yes. And after that, I started doing Balinese dance and contemporary. OK, mom's here, by the way. Yes. Mom, thanks for coming. <laughs> Hello. Bye. Thank you for accompanying Daisy. Yes. But I know there's a lot of varieties, especially in Balinese dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, you chose, I mean, you just performed Rajang dance. Mm -hmm. What made this one special for you? Uh, this dance is very sacral and is usually performed in the Hindu temples. Yeah. And it is very special to me because when I dance it, I do not dance it for the crowd. I dance it for God. Oh, okay. So you've had to learn. See, this is another thing about Indonesian traditional dances because my daughter does traditional dance. She's yes. done it for a couple of years now. And what was interesting is it's not lear just about learning the dance moves, but you actually have to learn the meaning behind mm -hmm. the dances mm -hmm. and all the, the story and the, tra Philosophy. the tradition that comes yes. with it. Yes. Now, your background, interestingly, is gymnastics. So how does that help, or did that help, and how were you able to transition from gymnastics to, to traditional dance? Because what we see is a lot of gracefulness, but it also involves a lot of strength as well. I know your core has to be strong. Did you find it, it helped that you had a background in... Uh, in gymnastics, and you told us earlier that you did ballet when you were younger as well, correct? Uh, yeah, well, that was like only long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, okay. Um, well, uh, I don't know. I um, because you always have to keep your elbows up right. and your back straight. It was very helpful for me from from learning from gymnastics. We also had to keep our like back posture, straight. Right? Yes. Yes. But. Otherwise, it was like totally different. It mm. was not tall and graceful. It was down. It was like bending knees. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. uh, arms bent. So it was like totally different. Um, okay. But it, you even have the mimic because like uh, first you were not smiling and then you smiled because that's the a end. different part of the dance. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then like the head movements and the eyes. Yes. Like the eyes, yeah. Was it challenging for you? Because we know if it's gym gymnastics is a is a, I think, a, a challenge itself. But it's a different type of challenge. But yes, right? it is, right? So mm -hmm. how was it for you? Um, at first, I'm going to be honest that I, I was, uh, it was so new to me, I wasn't very keen on learning it at first. <laughs> but then with the years, I started to like love it very much mm -hmm. because it was like I was doing it very oftenly. Yeah. And I really like it still. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's. Uh, it was very hard for me to get the expression right yeah. and uh, coordinate all the movements. And it was like, it was challenging, but I'm really thankful that I joined the classes because now I have very good opportunities to perform and to 
join festivals and of course. stuff. It was. Alberto synchronized everything. Yeah. I mean, of course, for us as the audience, we're mesmerized. We're seeing one thing. Yeah. But they're doing like 18 different things That's at the right. same time, and they yeah. have to keep it all coordinated. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's talk a little bit about your your transition, moving to Indonesia to a, basically a new country, but then adopting what is uh, many has actually done since they're probably little as well. How has that helped you transition and learn more about the Indonesian culture? Because you've obviously have to learn the stories behind this, mm -hmm. but not just that, but you're also practicing, so you're learning the disciplines of what the Indonesian traditional dancers do. So how has that helped you help, um, help to adapt to the Indonesian culture? Well, um, I have learned a lot from my teacher mm -hmm. and um, from the Indonesian kids. It was. It was very nice for me to learn all of this, and it's very interesting because the Balinese culture is very unique, mm -hmm. uh, unlike other cultures. Very true. It's um, the language is totally different, mm -hmm. and the characters of the dances and the stories are are very interesting too. Yeah. Oh, you know what? In Balinese, we would say a beautiful woman as jegek. So you're a jegek <laughs> DC right here. That's among us on the coach. Uh, and the couch, but again, uh, you know, you've said that you are doing this dance especially for you, like a you to worship your God, right? In regards to that, though, again, as a dancer, you do also make appearances in front of the audience, especially for the local audiences. Now, when you have to perform out there, how does it feel for you, especially in Bali, because this is their, <laughs> this is their culture, yeah. and you're dancing their culture. Uh, I I feel very confident with. The, yeah, the crowd because uh, they, they're they very happy that a foreigner mm -hmm. likes to, wants to learn their culture yes. and likes it and does it and respects it mm -hmm. and they're very happy and they just look at me as if I was just a Balinese girl and that's just what I want. Yeah. So, yeah, that's nice. They've accepted you as one of their own. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of great feedbacks. Just I was asked by Paul, was there any one memorable moment that you, you know, danced for the audience that really is still in your mind and heart right now? Mm. Uh, that must have been when I first performed my Chondong dance. Okay. Chondong, uh, okay. Yes. Yes. It was very memorable. It was my first time performing. I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah, uh, because the Chandang dance is uh, performed alone, okay. and I was only used to performing with a group of kids, mm -hmm. so it was like totally new for me. And I was very nervous, but very excited. And um, after the performance, uh, the host asked me to do an interview in front of the crowd and it was also touching and so overwhelming that I started crying. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Tears of joy. So thankfully. happy for you. So wait, so you, the Chandong dance, the Rejang dance, how many Balinese dances have you learned over the years? I don't know, maybe around 10 to 12. Wow, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're probably like, that works out to like two wow. or three a year. That's amazing. That's quite a bit. So you've performed in front of audiences as well. Mm -hmm. You've learned many dances. What are your, your actual goals, like your long-term goals? Do you have one yet? I mean, this is something that's still fairly new to you. You're obviously mm -hmm. very passionate about it. Do you have any big goals when it comes to this? Mm, um, I would definitely be very keen and I would very love to perform it in other countries to show that the Balinese culture, which is very unique to other people in, in different countries, and if I would have the opportunity, I would bring my dance group, Kerta Art, and my teacher to other countries uh -huh. to perform. How about your, your home country? Sweden, correct? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be something? Like to bring it to your home country yes. and to introduce the culture that you've been... Oh, I would love to do that. <laughs> Thank you for being a great ambassador for us in Indonesia yes. and also for Sweden. Yes. Okay, but out of all the 10 dancing, or, uh, dancings that you've already learned, which one is the easiest? Easiest. <laughs> uh, I, don't asking, I don't think there's anything. I'm, I'm easy, asking this because there's a following up question after oh, okay. this. Oh, okay. All right, go. <laughs> the most there? easiest for people. I have a feeling I know where you're going yeah. with this. For people. Something that's simple. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, uh, there is first, we in the dance school, we learn the dance Muspanjali, which is considered the most easiest one because the, the movements and the expressions are very simple. Just flat. 
Okay, I think we'll do that one. Okay, okay, okay ask your follow-up. I think, I think okay. I know where exactly because it is. Because our fellow producers want uh, for, want you to teach us oh, here a we go. dance. <laughs> we want the easiest part. Okay, so from student to teacher, today you're going to teach us a couple of simple yes. moves. Perhaps not yes. the whole dance, yes. but a couple of simple moves yes, that please. you would learn in the very beginning. Are you okay. ready? Yes. Yes, okay. okay. I'm going to... Lead the way, our guru. I'm gonna our teacher. My, I'm going to remove my footwear yeah, because, because I, think I see that not she's wearing barefoot. Yeah. So. Let's, you know, uh, you understand why I have to ask that question, right? I know, because yes. you, don't, you don't want to be learning no. the Rajam dance. No, 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 no. It's just, I, I couldn't. Okay, Not there we there go. Yet. So, uh, start us off. What would be our position that we need to be? So, um, for there are different types of dances. There is for girls, and there is uh, for boys, okay. and there's okay. something that's in between. Okay. Like, usually we'll danced by girls, but it's like a more manly character. Okay, okay, okay perfect. So, uh, let's start off... Um, uh, Paolo, can you wait a little bit, oh, I will. Alex? I will. Okay. Gladly <laughs> wait here, doing nothing. Can I take your place? Oh, okay. Go ahead. So, okay. for the girl dances, yes. We uh, there is a movement called agam. Agam. Yes. So we put our feet like this. Okay. This is called the right agam. So for the right agam, the left foot is in front. Okay. And the right foot is in back. Yes. And there's a little space between. Okay. So, and then. We bend our knees like this, okay. and then the hips, they go to the left for the right angle. <laughs> Leg day. I, this is Leg not, oh, this is not graceful. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm trying. Okay. Okay, and yes. And then we keep our shoulders back. Okay, yes. Yeah, back straight. Back straight. And then we keep our elbows up. You look up very like flawless for you, but not for me. Elbows up, I, elbows up. There you I go. Look like a, I look like a Dorian lady. <laughs> okay, I'm trying, hey, guys. So you got it. There mm. you go. Elbows yeah. up. Right Elbows up. Alongside okay. your shoulders. Yes. See? Yeah. Mommy, I got the good posture from Daisy. <laughs> okay? That's perfect. Okay. Okay. And I can stay like this there throughout the minutes. No. No. And then uh, we add a little shake in the fingers. So okay. Like this. Hey, nice. Mm. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's very good. Okay. And then, then I just, like just keep doing that. <laughs> yes. Oh, and for the right agam. The right hand yes. is level with the eyes. Okay. Got and then the left hand is level with the breast. Okay, like this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, but see, let's still keep oh, so, it up. Uh, yes. Elbow, elbow. Okay, yes. you, you can go up now. <laughs> Gym day today. <laughs> Remember your age. Bro. I know. <laughs> I am, I'm You're trying. Not as young okay. As <laughs> okay, you can you can go out. I'm not really um, an expert in the uh, manly kind of dances. Thank goodness but, for that. Okay. But I, I know a few okay. basics. Let's try. Uh, so, instead of keeping the legs close, mm -hmm. we keep it a little open. wider. Yeah, okay. and then we point our toes up okay. like this. Wow. Yes, what? yes, and then we do the same as for the agam for girls. Uh -oh. But we, yeah, we keep our elbows up. But for the boys, the shoulders are up. Are like this. Up a bit. Yeah, yes, and then keep your. You have the right wardrobe for that. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Gonna get a cramp soon. Okay. okay. Do yeah. I have to go low as well? <laughs> oh, and keep. Your oh, fingers. thumb in. Yes, okay. okay. And then you straighten your fingers and give them a shake. And don't forget your shoulders. Up. <laughs> I can hear people laughing. <laughs> I'm doing the eyes. I don't even see. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, then we do it together. Uh, yeah, we can do it together. Okay. So I will join the girl. Okay. The dance position. Yes. Ready? So we go for the right gum. Yes. Keep your legs straight. Oh, straight. Yes. Okay. That's right. And then let's try the left agam. So it's it's the opposite. opposite. Yes. And then. Oh right. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So we go for the left agam. So the okay. hips are to the right. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm Yay. Hey. All right. <laughs> Who How many parts of you are stiff right now? <laughs> My back shoulders are killing me. I don't like know how to keep your shoulders. This is the hardest part for me. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, it seems like everything has to be on yeah. the correct form. You have to hold it. I guess that's yes. the most difficult part. Wow, yes. Daisy, you're a great teacher, by the way. Thank, Thank you so much, yes. Daisy. I guess I get the <laughs> left and right agam, okay. right? Yes. yes. Glad to have you on the program. And oh, glad to have you I'm honored to be here. Thank Daisy. you for You're the best. Thank you so much. All right, so folks, we have many more to come right here to, for our C morning anniversary, but we're taking a short break right now. Stay tuned because we still have to come from the fourth anniversary of C today and the C morning show, Expanding Horizon, inspiring more. There you go.